series. My name is Samuel Hollis, and I have the pleasure of serving as Director of Operations and Scholarship for the United States Capitol Historical Society. And I'm so glad that many of you took time out of your day to join us for this important exploration of a resource we're really proud of, our We the People Civics Education Hub. Uh, before we get started with today's uh, with today's program, I'd like to go over a couple of technical housekeeping matters. Uh, if you've joined us before, you know one of the ways we love to interact with you, our audience, through the Zoom webinar platform is through Q&A. Uh, and we're going to have a special guest for Q&A at the end of today's program. Uh, but before we get into that, you should note that the Q&A section of the webinar looks like two speech bubbles, either at the top or bottom of your screen, depending on what device you're using to join us today. If you have any technical troubleshooting matters, if you feel like you're having difficulty hearing or seeing the video, uh, please put that into the chat section of the webinar. I'll be keeping an eye on that in real time. Once again, any content-based questions about the hub or about any of the resources we feature in today's program, go. Can, you can put those into the Q&A section of the webinar. It's now also my great pleasure to introduce the President and CEO of the United States Capitol Historical Society, Jane Campbell, to get us started. Jane. Good afternoon. Thanks, Sam, for all the work that you do to make these uh, webinars happen. This is our ongoing series, what we call Lunch Bites, which gives us a little bit of opportunity to talk about the work of the Capitol Historical Society, to talk about the Capitol itself, some of the stories uh, of the Capitol, and some of the real background. Um, today, we are going to share with you a video that is of an event that we did last Thursday. And it was a congressional briefing about our We the People Constitution Hub. And because I opened that by explaining to our congressional staff who had joined us what we did, why we did the hub, I'm not gonna give you the same story over and over again. I just want you to tune in and see how we presented this to our friends who are staff members of Congress. And when the video is closed, we have with us Jenna Welch, who's the director and producer of our newest resource, Beautiful Agitators, which is the first in hopefully a series of using the theater to teach constitution. And she's gonna talk about that video and what they did and how it relates to lesson plans as we work with students to understand the Constitution and how it lives today. So with that background, we invite you to join us in a congressional briefing about the We the People Constitution Hub. Sam, play the video. Good afternoon. Um, welcome to the premiere of the We the People Virtual Hub. This is really an exciting day for all of us here at the United States Capitol Historical Society. For almost 60 years, the, the society has served as the congressionally chartered nonprofit dedicated to inspiring informed patriotism. 16 years ago, we started the We the People Constitution Tours to teach middle school students in the most impoverished DC public schools how the Constitution lives in Washington, DC. With the help of our extraordinary We the People Consortium partners, the United States Capitol Visitor Center, the White House Historical Association, the National Archives and Records Administration, the President's Park White House Visitor Center Park Service, the George Washington Memorial Park Service, We've brought over 20,000 students to see the iconic buildings and learn how our government functions. In our last in-person field trip was March 11, 2020. As the public health crisis canceled in-person events, first for a while and then for a very long time, we engaged with our consortium to pull our digital resources together in one place. With the support of the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, we partnered with the digital learning company to build a hub where teachers could find our materials easily. The We the People virtual hub is the result of this collaboration. This online tool, now available to educators nationwide, 
provides resources to bring the Constitution to life and to help learners of all ages gain a deeper knowledge of their civic rights and responsibilities. From videos and interactive timelines to quizzes and classroom discussions, the Hub features a suite of tools and activities for every learning style. At today's event, you will also see the first of our work to teach the Constitution through theater, uh, which has also been created with the support of the Hewlett Foundation. Now, regardless of what's happening in the world, we can deliver tools to teach our history to people everywhere, at any time, in any place. And we bring these to you because we know that members of Congress are always trying to teach what they do, why they do it, and that we all have teachers in our communities that are seeking these kind of resources. Our government functions best when we have informed citizens and our work at the society is dedicated to honoring the promise of a government by the people, for the people, and of the people. And we strive to do our part to make sure that those three precious words, we the people, become reality. As we reach out to be more inclusive, to help everyone in this country better understand what the document promises to America's people, we move closer to a more perfect union. Over the next hour, you'll hear from several guests, including members of Congress, and get a firsthand look at what's offered within the We the People Hub. Hear from the creators and actors of Beautiful Agitators, a stage play about the life and legacy of civil rights activist Vera Mae Pegues. I hope you'll enjoy what follows. So let's get started. Kicking off this afternoon are the leaders of the Senate Rules Committee, Chairwoman Senator Amy Klobuchar and Ranking Member Senator Roy Blunt. Elected in 2007, Senator Klobuchar is the first woman to represent Minnesota in the Senate. As chair, she works to ensure fairness, transparency, and efficiency in government and elections. Hailing from Missouri, Senator Blunt has dedicated his career to public service. He began as a history teacher and then a university president. In addition to his leadership on rules, he chairs the Senate Republican Policy Committee and serves as the ranking member of the Appropriations Subcommittee on Labor, Health, and Human Services and Education. If you watch carefully, you will also see Senator Blunt in our We the People video. So we start with Senator Klobuchar. Thank you, Jane, for moderating today's showcase. I enjoyed working with you during my years, uh, when your years, when you were there as chief of staff to my good friend, Senator Landrieu. I have a very fond memory of that time when somehow the New Orleans Saints beat the Vikings in a playoff game, big surprise. And I ended up having to make gumbo and bring it to the entire Louisiana staff of Mary Landrieu, in which Mary said, you know what, this is good gumbo, but I think it needs some Tabasco sauce. And she ended up dumping an entire bottle of Tabasco sauce in my Minnesota gumbo. Well, in 1978, my mentor, Vice President Walter Mondale, who sadly we recently lost, signed the U.S. Capitol Historical Society's Congressional Charter, setting as the organization's mission, the fostering and increasing of an informed patriotism. In the decades since, the United States Capitol Historical Society has lived up to that mission by educating the public on the history and heritage of the U.S. Capitol, its institutions, and those who served in it. As chair of the Rules Committee, which is the committee responsible for the organization and operation of the Senate and legislative branch support agency, and with jurisdiction over federal elections, we have a lot going on. I am glad to join you via video to support the mission of this group. I want to thank everyone for attending today's showcase of the We the People Hub. These new online educational resources are going to connect students and teachers across the country to the U.S. Capitol and bring civics to life. And this work couldn't be more timely. Our democracy was tested this year when an angry mob of violent insurrectionists attacked our capitals. It wasn't just an attack on our beautiful buildings. 
It was an attack on our republic itself. I will always remember walking to the House chamber at 3.30 a.m. when, yes, it was all done and our brave police officers had done such good work, shattered glass and broken windows strewn in the hallway, and it was Senator Blunt and myself and Vice President Pence and two young women who carried the mahogany box holding the last electoral votes of the remaining states. We knew that day, whether we were Democrats or Republicans, we had to return to do our job. And that night we made clear to everyone, democracy will prevail. And just two weeks later at the inauguration, democracy did prevail. We retook the platform, all the Democratic and Republican leadership that just weeks before had been overrun by that same angry mob. And as I said that day from the inaugural stage under that beautiful blue sky at the very place where you could see the spray paint at the bottom of the columns and the makeshift windows behind us, this is a day our democracy picks itself up, brushes off the dust, and does what America always does, goes forward as a nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We came together that day as Democrats, Republicans, and Independents for the inauguration of a new president. Because even in the face of division and strife, it's our responsibility as citizens to see to it that our democracy endures. Today's students are tomorrow's leaders. And the resources in the We the People Hub are going to help the next generation grow up to be ready to take up the mantle of protecting our democracy. It's your democracy. I want to again thank the United States Capitol Historical Society for all you've done to build and expand the hub. And to all of you attending today's event, once you see how incredible these virtual tours and lessons are, please share them with your friends, family, and teachers. Enjoy the rest of the showcase. You deserve it. Hi, I'm Roy Blunt. It's an honor to be with you as we all celebrate today's exciting launch for the We the People. Uh, we the People Hub uh, will provide so many students with a look inside the three branches of our government and bring our Constitution to life before their eyes. Over the last year, educators have overcome challenges to give their students a quality education. And as a former history teacher, I know what it's like to be in front of a classroom and all the work it takes to prepare for those lessons. I also know how hard it is to have a classroom that's not there, that you're not communicating with or connecting with in the same way. I'm always thankful for all that our teachers do for kids, but especially during times like these. I'm very proud of the United States Capitol Historical Society and all their efforts to create this free, open access online civics education resource. Uh, their, their work will be broadcast to, to classrooms around the nation to teach students the significance of our country's history and the patriotic principles that guide us forward. So thank you to President Jane Campbell for your hard work and dedication to preserving our history for future Americans. And thank you again for allowing me to celebrate with you all today. Congratulations on the launch. Well, it's certainly, it, it certain, certainly is a great thing to see the chair and the ranking member of our rules committee standing up for civic education. So they talked about the hub and I want to bring to you Mindy Bolin from the Institute for the Study of Knowledge Management and Education. She will be able to show you what, how the hub actually works and how to find it. And so that you can look at the highlights as you try to share this information with your constituents. Mindy, take it away. Thank you, Dane. I'm really happy to be here with everyone today. And I am going to go ahead and show my screen without further ado to show you how you can access the We The People Hub on OER Commons. Um, the organization that I work for, ISCME, is um, 
focused on making education and learning participatory, equitable, and open. So this opportunity to work with the United States Capitol Historical Society is right in line with what we seek to do of making all kinds of education accessible for everyone. Um, OER Commons is our digital library of open educational resources. You can see here the URL. I think I can probably put that in chat at some point. But I want to show you now how to navigate to the hub that we're launching today. If you go to OER Commons, you don't have to be logged in. Click on the hubs link in the top. Click either see all hubs or I've made it a featured hub today so you can go directly there. And, uh, and now here we are at the We the People hub. Hubs on OER Commons are places where organizations can highlight curated collections of resources that have been vetted and validated for use um, around the US and really around the globe. Um, today, I want to show you how to navigate the hub, what's here for you to use, and to explain how you might benefit from knowing about it and talking about it. The We the People Hub is organized um, in many through collections and videos, so you can see those links here at the top to navigate down the page. If you want to search for resources, you do that here. But really, I want to go down here to show you some of the true features here. We have videos related not only to the legislative branch, but to the executive branch and the judicial branch. So we are covering all of the different areas, um, in the three different branches of the US government. We've also highlighted the beautiful agitators video um, of the play that we're going to be talking about later in this, in this presentation. Um, and you can see the preview here um, and links as well to the corresponding curriculum that has been developed by our partners. This uh, hub also highlights numerous resources related to the US Constitution organized into these curated collections. So if you were to click into any of these, you will see resources that have been vetted by the team as high value civics resources that really will be, that are free to use for educators around the country. And um, we encourage you to look at them and know that this is a way, a place to point people interested in civics education. One of the things that came out of the COVID pandemic for all of us was this need to be able to shift and offer materials virtually. And so I think one of the great benefits for the historical society and for us as a result is the creation of this hub, which is a, which is available to anyone. It makes it so that you can find resources that have been validated. You can contribute and join groups, um, and really be a part of the conversation related to this, these materials. I think that uh, that's what I've got for you today. <laughs> Thank you. So well, and much. and mainly, what we might share with people is that the consortium members have each taken special responsibility. The executive branch uh, section, the White House Historical Society is very much involved in. The legislative branch is the Capitol Historical Society and the Capitol Visitor Center. Capitol Visitor Center developed a beautiful uh, virtual tour of the Capitol that's about 11 minutes, uh, 11 minutes long together with lesson plans. And they, they put that there and they have been an extraordinary partner. So if you look at each of these, you'll see the work of the National Archives, the National Park Service. And this hub is something that is not frozen in time. We are continually adding resources to it. And because there's the teacher, uh, the teacher dialogue, uh, what is it called? Chat group or whatever. The group, yes, the, in the, the group. groups. Um, so, teachers can then get in, uh, in where it says educators all locations. You can see we have several for DC because we started with the DC public schools, but now we have it for educators nationwide, for educators to talk with one another. And it will, we will also be looking at it to get feedback from teachers who say, you know, I really wish you had a resource about this. And we will do our best to try to find a resource or see if one of the consortium partners would develop a resource that we can add to it. Um, and teachers can add things themselves and we then take a look at it. You know, obviously the consortium members want to make sure that things are accurate and uh, because we're very careful on the, uh, you know, bipartisan, uh, nonpartisan, we, we want to make sure that there's 
opportunity for understanding the voices. So this is a resource and it is available if you come to the um, United States Capitol Historical Society, or you can get to the hub that way. Somebody asked in the, in the questions, will this uh, session be recorded? Yes, it is being recorded. And yes, you will be able to get it from the Capitol Historical Society uh, website. And so you can share this with anyone who you're interested in sharing with. Uh, and you know, as we go along, if you have questions, please feel free to put them in the hub, put them in the chat. Uh, Mindy has added the link to the hub in the chat if you want to pull that, uh, pull that as we move forward. So with that introduction, we want to move to giving you a, a, some views of some of the things that are in the hub that gives you a sense of the kind of resources and so that you can understand what a great resource. Thank you, Mindy, for being with us and participating and for all your work behind the scenes to make the hub work. My pleasure. Thank you. Every time I see this tool, I get excited. Uh, and now on the screen, you have Virginia Fox. Congresswoman Fox has been a longtime supporter of the United States Capitol Society. She's on our Congressional Advisory Board and just has been a dedicated advocate for educators. Um, she represents North Carolina's fifth district and currently serves as the Republican leader of the House Committee on Education and Labor. And you will see her also in the We the People video. But first, we're going to listen to her word. So Virginia Fox, Congresswoman Fox, please join us. Congressional District. For the last six years, I've served as a trustee advisor and member of the United States Capitol Historical Society. I'm so proud to see the progress that the Historical Society continues to achieve in fulfilling its mission of inspiring informed patriotism. Three years ago, I participated in interviews as part of the Society's production of the We the People Constitution Tour video series. As a video version of the successful field trip program that has been led by the Historical Society, this virtual tour brings the Constitution and the three branches of government right before the eyes of the American people. As a former educator, I understand that teachers across this great country have faced innumerable challenges through the COVID-19 pandemic. Lesson plans have been decimated, field trips have been crossed off calendars, and students have missed out on countless educational opportunities. However, the Historical Society and its dedicated staff members have been hard at work creating a solution. Through the creation of a free open access online civics education resource hub, educators can use resources like the We the People video in classrooms across the country. Thank you to today's attendees, many of whom work on education matters for both personal offices as well as on committees for being here. It is my hope that you share this hub and its resources with educators in your respective districts and states. Hi everyone, I'm Kristen Welker with NBC News. Today, we join a group of middle schoolers on a visit to the U.S. Capitol building, home of Congress, and one of the three branches of our government, the legislature. It's here where you and I are represented and where we the people come first. America must live up to its values by treating everyone as equal and ending discrimination once and for all. 
No, I will not yield. No, I will not yield. The joint resolution is passed. The Constitution says that war shall be declared by Congress. You challenge their Americanism, and it's the lowest thing that I've ever seen. Without objection, order. I'm hoping Americans watch it. It was a earth-shattering, groundbreaking concept in 1787 that the people themselves were responsible for their government. The ayes have it. The general stands approved. In the Constitution, the first branch of government is Article One, the legislative branch, which will be composed of the House and the Senate. I strongly urge my colleagues to support the bill. The founders wanted the legislative branch to be the most important branch because it's the branch that is directly elected by the people. My bosses are the people who elect me. Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, let's look at the ground which we're on. This is Capitol Hill. The Capitol building is the headquarters of Congress. In the Capitol, this is the home of the legislative branch. This is where the Senate and the House meet. The main role is to be a check and balance on the other branches of government, to have oversight over how the executive branch, that would be the president, implements the will of Congress in legislation that we have passed. If you look to the left, that's the Senate wing. If you look to the right, that is the House wing. This is an important time to send that message around the world. Our Constitution designed this two-party legislature, one representative of the states, not of the population, the other more representative of the full population. We have 435 representatives. In the Senate, there are 100 senators. So the Senate is composed of two senators per state, so that gives even the small states the same representation in the Senate. The Senate uh, was designed so that the minority would always be heard. The House, though, has proportional representation based on the size of the state. The Congress of the United States works its will by legislation passing the House, passing the Senate, going to the president for his signature. If the president does not sign the bill or the vetoes the bill, then by two-thirds vote in each house, the Congress can stop that action of the president. I think it goes a long way to showing that we really can come together. When a vote is called, we will have the roll read by a clerk. Each senator will vote in person by either an aye or a nay. Now, in the House of Representatives, they have electronic voting machines. Members will record their vote by electronic device. This is a five-minute vote. This resolution puts the United States Congress on the record as being on the side of the people. But in our government, power comes from the people, and we represent the people. Nothing is more of a privilege than the constituents of your district saying, you speak for me on the floor of the House of Representatives. See the statue on top of the Capitol? You know the name of that statue is Freedom? She's 19 and a half feet tall from head to toe. The workers were enslaved African Americans. On April 16, 1862, Congress abolished slavery here in Washington, D.C. And the effect was that those very men working on the Statue of Freedom got their freedom while they were working on it. Because of the Statue of Freedom, basically, the sun will rise on the face of freedom, but it won't set on the face of freedom. gives you uh, just a sense of one of the videos, that particular video series, there's one on each branch of the government and one on preserving the documents of the government that the National Archives worked with us on. 
all of those are available on the hub. And one of the great things about this project is that there are so many members of Congress from all different perspectives and walks of life who wanted to join us to show their support for this effort to keep this. And so we're now honored to hear from Wyoming's lone member of Congress in the United States House of Representatives, Liz Cheney. She was first elected in 2016 on a platform of restoring America's strength and power in the world and pursuing conservative solutions to create jobs, cut taxes and regulations, expand America's energy, mining and agriculture. She ser currently serves on the House Armed Services Committee. And before she came to Congress, uh, Congresswoman Cheney served at the State Department as a Deputy Assistant Secretary of State and Principal Deputy Assistant for the Middle East. She is a member of the International Board of Advisors at the University of Wyoming, Congresswoman Chang. Hi, this is Congresswoman Liz Cheney. I wanna add my voice to the many other members and elected officials commending the tremendous work of the US Capitol Historical Society for the time and effort they have undertaken in the development of this online civics education resource hub. When we're elected to serve in Congress, each and every member swears an oath to defend the Constitution. To understand the significance of that oath, it's essential that America's students and people all across the country recognize what that oath says and what our duty to the Constitution is. This portal will serve as an instrumental resource in providing important information, allowing more people to have a greater appreciation for all that it means to be an American. Now, more than ever, our country must have an engaged, informed, and active citizenry that is unified behind a series of common principles woven into the fabric of our nation. We all have a duty and an obligation to be involved. These new tools offered as part of this hub by the Capitol Historical Society will go a long way to bringing more students into the fold and allowing them to recognize the importance of our system of government. I wanna thank everyone with the Historical Society who spent time developing this portal and give a special acknowledgement to Tim White, who's from Wyoming and serves on the board of this organization. We are so grateful for the work you do in preserving and sharing the remarkable story of all that has happened at this magnificent capital and in the course of our exceptional history. This new hub will add to the impressive work the society does and build on the integral role you play and educating so many across the country. Thank you for all you do. Thank you so much, Congresswoman Cheney. And I talked to you early about the fact that we're continually adding resources to the hub. And our next partner in strong civic education is the Senator from Maryland, Ben Cardin. And Senator Cardin brought the Discovery Education team to the Capitol. Uh, and we worked with him on a brand new uh, program that was put together uh, and premiered on Labor Memorial Day. Um, and it is called The City of Us, and it is a tour of Washington, D.C., complete with lesson plans. Senator Cardin was first elected to the Senate in 2006, is now chair of the Committee on Small Business and Entrepreneurship, very dear to my heart, a senior member of the C Senate Foreign Relations, Finance, Finance and Environmental and Public Works. So we will hear from Senator Cardin and then a small piece of the Discovery Education video that he was so responsible for making happen. Please join us, Senator Cardin. Hi, I'm Senator Ben Cardin from Maryland. It's a pleasure to join you for the long anticipated launch of the Civic Education Resource Hub through the U.S. Capitol Historical Society. Since 1962, the U.S. Capitol Historical Society has brought stories to light and has been instrumental in educating the public on our nation's rich history. The COVID-19 pandemic presented several challenges to our traditional ways of learning and schooling for families and educators alike. But the U.S. Capitol Historical Society stepped up and played a critical role in disseminating critical learning materials. Knowing their role in keeping the public updated over the course of the pandemic, it was an honor to work with the U.S. Capitol Historical Society over the last year on the congressional segment 
on the city of us, a virtual field trip to Washington, D.C., produced by Discovery Education, a proud Maryland-based institution. We were able to bring together distinguished leading figures, such as First Lady Dr. Jill Biden and Secretary of the Interior, Deb Holland, with historical experts from sites all over Washington, D.C., including the U.S. Capitol, to answer the pressing questions of curious minds. We live in a nation with a strong system of government, serving as a guidepost for democracies and countries ar across the globe. That is why we cannot overstate the role and value of civic education in everyday lives. Educating Americans on civic education, including our system of government, election and legislative processes, as well as elected leaders and the importance of community participation, strengthens communities. Civic engagement at the local, state, and federal level is imperative because it guarantees our voice is heard. A new generation of thinkers and dreamers are joining the movement for a fair and just society for all. I am grateful for the work of the U.S. Capitol Historical Society has done to create a free, open access, online civic education resource hub so that resources like the City of Us video tour can be used in classrooms, real or virtual, across the country from now on. I encourage everyone to tell their friends, family, and educators about this new hub and outstanding resource hub. Thank you. The U.S. Capitol, two miles up Pennsylvania Avenue from the White House, is the next stop on the City of Us virtual field trip. With its massive cast iron dome weighing almost 9 million pounds, it's one of the most recognizable government buildings in the world. It's also home to the legislative branch of our government. When our country's founders wrote the U.S. Constitution, they divided the government into three branches. Under a system called checks and balances, each branch was given special powers that allow it to block or check the other two branches. The system makes sure no branch becomes too powerful and keeps the government in balance. The legislative branch, or Congress, makes the laws. The executive branch, or presidency, enforces them. And the judicial branch, including the Supreme Court, judges whether they're fair or not. Congress itself has two parts. The Senate has 100 members two from each state. The House of Representatives has 435 voting members. The size of each state's population determines how many representatives it gets. Both the House and Senate have to vote in favor of a law for it to be sent to the president. Before we head inside, let's check our next student question, which is about the Capitol Dome. Hi, my name is Andrew, and I'm in seventh grade. What is the small statue at the top of the Capitol Dome? Well, thank you for your question. That statue may look small from the ground, but that statue is 19 and a half feet tall, weighs 15,000 pounds, and is made of bronze. The statue is called the Statue of Freedom. The Statue of Freedom is symbolic. It is symbolic of the freedom that we depend on in our country, that is a foundation of our country. That complicated headdress was not in the original design. The original design had a simple freedman's cap, which is what they used in ancient Rome to indicate that a person who had been formerly enslaved was free. But at the time this was designed, the Secretary of War did not want the symbol of a freed enslaved person to be on the top of the Capitol. Now there's more to the story. The metal worker, who was the principal person who made it, Philip Reed was an enslaved person when he started to build the Statue of Freedom. During the time that he was building, he was granted his freedom when President Lincoln freed the enslaved people in Washington, D.C seven months before he was finished. So for those last seven months of building the Statue of Freedom, Philip Reed was paid for the slave. So that gives you a, a quick snippet about the city of us. And you can see each video tells the story of the Capitol and the story of our country in a slightly different way. 
but you can see from the story of the, the Statue of Freedom that the story of bringing African Americans into full participation in our government is one of America's greatest challenges. And indeed, it is still a work in progress. Our newest resource on the hub is a virtual play reading accompanied by lesson plans of, called Beautiful Adjectives. And this play brings to life the story of an unsung heroine, Vera Mae Pegui, who was an African-American beauty parlor owner in Clarksdale, Mississippi, who opened her business by night to mobilize young people and registered thousands of African-Americans to vote in the 50s and 60s in the Mississippi Delta. Knowing that she was not getting any credit for her work, Vera May wrote her own autobiography. The Mississippi Humanities Council and the Mississippi Delta National Heritage Area funded an organization that is a very creative documentary theater company called StoryWorks to research this story and to write a play based on her story. The Hewlett Foundation partnered with us again to invest in creating a virtual play reading from that play so that this story could be told as an open educational resource for students across the country. We're gonna hear from two members of Congress who are whose lives have been impacted by the fact that Vera Mae Pagui and all of her colleagues fought hard to make sure that African-Americans had the right to vote. And once they had the right to vote, they had the right to serve in Congress and to have views as different as all the rest of us. And so we have two leaders, Representative Byron Donald and Representative Barbara Lee. Representative Donald was newly elected to Congress and serves Florida's 19th district. Congressman Donald serves on the budget, small business and oversight and reform committee. Prior to his election, he served in the Florida House of Representatives and spent a year chairing the pre-K through 12 quality subcommittee. Representative Barbara Lee serves California's 13th district. Congresswoman Lee serves on the budget committee and three subcommittees of the Appropriations Committee. In January, 2021, she became the first African-American to chair the House Appropriations Subcommittee on State Foreign Operations and Related Programs. And as the co-chair of the Policy and Steering Committee, Congresswoman Lee is the only African-American woman in Democratic leadership and works there to ensure that the committee's work reflects the diversity, dynamism, and integrity of the Democratic Caucus. And we will now hear from these two leaders, Congressman Don. Hi, I'm Congressman Byron Donald representing the great state of Florida. And the one thing I want to impress upon you is the importance of our constitutional republic. You see, our country is, is a country defined of the people, by the people, and for the people. But what that really means is that for the first time in world history, we have a government where the people truly are the deciders of who comes to the halls of Washington to represent them. We're one of the first countries to actually create and actually hold strong the separation of powers, empowering the legislature, the judicial, and the executive branch. What it really means is that in our country, in our society, our constitution and our republic have created the political framework for people to be free and to maintain their freedom free from government. It's an important thing, an important document, an important country. And I hope that in your continued tours and additional information that you review, you understand the importance of our republic. Thank you to the Congressional Historical Society for inviting me to participate in the Congressional premiere of We the People's Civics Resource Hub. I am especially excited to introduce its newest edition, a virtual play reading of Beautiful Agitators. Beautiful Agitators tells the dramatic story of Vera Mae Piggy, who used her beauty parlor in Clarksdale, Mississippi to register voters at night in the 1950s and 60s. Thanks to the We the People Hub 
teachers and students around the country can learn more about this unsung hero, heroine of the civil rights movement. I hope that Daryl May Piggy's story will inspire the next generation to make full use of their right to vote and move us towards a more perfect union. Let's continue to provide educators across the country with the resources they need to inspire our young people. And now, the video of the play. <laughs> I really liked y'all's performance at the church, Mary Jane. Thank you, Wilma. What did you like best about it? I just like listening to you sing. Were you nervous? I wasn't nervous to be singing, but looking into the crowd and eyeing down that Chief Collins made me uneasy. Not knowing what he was going to do? Not knowing what he could do. I felt the thickness in the air just standing in the crowd. No one was looking at me, and I felt it. You and Guy Karen were singing, We Shall Overcome. A colored woman with a white man singing on the same stage and in front of colored and white folks for the first time in Coahoma County. It made me believe anything was possible. That's why we did it. When I got on that stage and started singing, it felt like the way it's supposed to be. You're starting to sound like your mama now. <laughs> <clears throat> did they make it? Guy and his wife just got arrested. Mrs. Carolyn is pregnant. Jail is no place for a pregnant woman. Nick, didn't you follow them across the county line? Yes, we did. We had six cars to escort them, three in front, three behind. We even had Reverend Redford and Reverend Drew with us. What reason did they have to arrest them? They don't need a reason. Mississippi police will arrest you for having two feet. Reverend Rayford says the cops got on a trumped up charge. They gave him a ticket for speeding the red light and took him to the station. Who are you calling? The press register. They'll want to know after Guy Carowin played in Coma County's first integrated concert, he was thrown in jail. This is getting crazy. My mama and the NAACP lawyers need to be contacted too. Wilma, can you call them? Nick, can you drive me to the station? Shall not, I shall not be moved. I shall not, I shall not be moved just like a tree planted by the water. I shall not be moved. Thank you. I will be sure to call you if I have any more information. Goodbye. What have you heard from the neighboring counties? Nothing new. Nobody wants to say anything over the phone. So if you want information, you have to travel. And most folks are too scared to go far. In the jails? I've called every jail in Mississippi. Nobody has any accounts of arrest under the name Sidman, Cheney, or Swerner. I think we should drive down to Longdale, find out what's happening there. Do you think there's any hope? Northerners helping the Southern movement are missing. They have the mark of Cain. Nothing good will come from that. They can't be dead, Mary Jane. Not yet. They'll be arrested and held for questioning. There's no gossip, barely any news coverage. The officials who seem to be looking for them seem pretty content that the boys went out for a swim and drowned. Is anyone looking? 
No. Look, we know that Mickey, Andrew, and Bear left Meridian around noon, made to Kirkland's house by one. They went down to Mount Zion Church to check out the fire damage and spend time with the congregation. Blood Cole, he told him that the clan had been looking for Mickey that night and that the blows he took were intended for him. Mickey would have been there too if he hadn't been working at the Freedom School. They never made it out of Neshoba County. Dr. Henry, it's great to see your face. Did you shake up Washington? We got an order with Bobby Kennedy. Charles Edward Roy Wilkins and I marched to the Justice Department and they let us in. What did Kennedy have to say? The Attorney General is on our side as an advisor. He's ordered the FBI to expedite the search and appointed Alan Douglas to investigate. Douglas, the former CIA director? Yes. Once he arrives, Charles Evers and I will brief him on the abduction and the failure of the FBI to effectively assist us. President Johnson will be sending the troops from the Naval Air Station to Meridian to help with the search. The president is making a very loud statement. How are things here, Mayor Johnson? The second group of volunteers will be here Sunday, and I'm not sure we're sending any to Neshoba County. I'm making alternate arrangements for them just to be on the safe side. Piggy's Beauty Salon, how can I help you? Mary Jane. Yes, Mama. Is Dr. Henry there yet? Yes, he's arrived and he was good. good. Tell him things are in place. Listen, I have to be quick. They found the station wagon by a swamp off 491. They burned it. They burned it. Governor Johnson has offered to send in the Mississippi National Guard to lead the search. Now, I have to go. I'll be home late. Please be careful, Mom. Goodbye. The National Guard. That's the end of it. Might as well send in the Klan. Senator Eastland will deny any KKK activity. And validating our movement, exactly what the Dixiecrats need to fuel their filibusters against the Civil Rights Act. Will the rest of the country believe him? God help us. If we can crack Mississippi, <laughs> we can crack the whole South. So that is just a short a short excerpt uh, from a, the play which is an, an hour long and in each instance there are lesson plans that are, have actually been coordinated with the Mississippi standards for teaching about civil rights. So we invite you to put questions in the question and answer box as I bring to the stage uh, two of the people who were involved in the creation of the play and the lesson plans. Uh, Aaliyah Wright a play, the playwright and an actor, you'll recognize her, uh, is a re All right, Jen, you're on. And, and here we have Jenna Welch, uh, the producer and director of the play. So for our trusty participants who are on, uh, if you have any questions for her about where did they find um, one of the questions I have from every time I see this play, Jenna, it is just inspiring. And what is inspiring to me is tell the story about how you actually found out about Vera Mae Piggy. Uh, sure. Um, I'm a theater artist and documentary artist and journalist um, based in San Francisco, California, and now Clarksdale, Mississippi. Um, and we came to this project trying to answer the question, um, why if the Mississippi Department of Education and the Mississippi Civil Rights Commission had developed the highest standard for civil rights and human rights education standards in the country, why was there such a failure for the students in Mississippi to meet those standards? And so we began researching a lot uh, with my colleagues, and particularly Aaliyah Wright, who is a journalist in her um, professional life and a documentary theater maker with me, um, focusing on education. 
And we were looking at the inequities in the education system in Mississippi. And what we discovered was there really wasn't a curriculum that developed that was developed or curriculums developed to support these amazing standards. And so we wrote this play with the intention of creating a curriculum to correspond with it. Now, where the idea for telling the story of Vera Mae Piggy came from um, was a pretty fantastic idea. We were sitting around in a writer's meeting and one of our co-writers said, you know, a long time ago, someone told me the story of this woman, Vera Mae Piggy, who ran voter registration classes out of her beauty shop at night over on Ashton Street. And we thought, are you serious? Really? <laughs> we need to know more about this. And so we started looking into it. And what we discovered was an incredible story of a visionary, a woman who was a visionary who had incredible capacity to organize and inspire her community. And she actually led the direct action that registered um, over 6,000 um, African-American voters between 1955 and 1965 before the Voting Rights Act was signed. And just the more we learned about her, the more inspired we became. And, and what really um, kind of took hold with us was the fact that even members of the community um, were unaware of her accomplishments. And she remarkably um, published, self-published an autobiography um, recounting her experiences. After she was done with her beauty shop and done organizing people to vote, she actually moved to Destro Detroit and went to Wayne State and studied journalism. And so that's an incredible story in and of itself, but it led her to publish this autobiography, which is a gold mine of civil rights um, activity in Cahoma County in Mississippi. Jenna, thank you so much. Um, if any of our participants have a quick question, we've got time for one more question uh, before we go in. Uh, but hearing none, let us just thank you. And Jenna, we look forward to working with you and we want to invite everyone who is here and who is looking at this. This message is, of course, as, it, as we always do, recorded and so available for later use. Um, and we invite you to look at the play. If you want to see the entire play, it's on our website. Um, it's about 60 minutes and it has lesson plans embedded in it. Um, so there are opportunities to use this, whether you're in Mississippi or in any other state, the, the history of our civil rights struggles uh, in the 50s and 60s, 60s are instructive um, and worth, worth remembering. As we look forward to upcoming events, um, we will be returning to our distinguished tour guide, Steve Livengood, um, who will be taking us uh, back to the development of Washington, D.C. in the capital area, looking at William Coston and his life uh, as one of the early African-American uh, significant leaders and re residents in Washington, D.C. Um, I want you to know that due to the health of one of our participants, the Congressional Briefing on the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier uh, 100th anniversary has been postponed. Um, and so stay tuned. Um, we, will, we will be rescheduling that, but we just have to sort out the particularities um, as our distinguished leader is recovering from some surgery. He's going to be fine, but we just have to find the right time. So we thank you always for your support, for the society, uh, and for your participation in our events. Have a good week and stay cool. Goodbye.